The pledge till death, an old French word that's more commonly known as today as a mortgage. It's the mountain of debt that's shackled round our necks until absolutely every single penny's been repaid. For many of us, it's the most money that we'll borrow in our lifetime. And as a result, it's the most costly too. So should we do whatever we can in order to overpay our mortgage or should we do perhaps the less conventional thing and invest the overpayment money instead. It's the dilemma that we have to repay that mountain of debt which is the liability on our hands or actually increase our asset base instead. So the question is, which one is the right path to take? Well, I've done some research and the answers are very interesting to say the least. So stay tuned because getting this decision wrong could cost you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds over the course of your lifetime. So here's the situation. Central bank rates are now sat at 3% and fixed rate mortgages offered out by banks are now sat at about 6%. All of a sudden, millions of people all over the UK are facing into a situation where their mortgage repayments have rose significantly. And here's the maths behind it. Before rates went up significantly, if you had a £250,000 mortgage repayable over 25 years, at a 2% rate of interest, your monthly repayments would be £1,060 per month. But if you're able to overpay that mortgage by an additional £200 per month, you would have actually cleared your mortgage four years and 10 months earlier, and you would have actually saved yourself £14,092 in interest payments. But what about now with the average fixed rate mortgage being somewhere in the realms of about 6%? Well, let's run the numbers using that same £250,000 mortgage at a 6% rate of interest over 25 years, you'd actually be looking to pay back £1,611 per month. Now that's a huge increase in monthly payments just on the change in interest rates alone. So with these high rates of interest, how much could you potentially save if you could still look to overpay that mortgage by the same £200 per month? Well, in this instance, the numbers are actually quite insane. You'll actually clear your mortgage five years and four months earlier but you will actually save yourself £57,677 in interest over the duration of your mortgage. So if you can financially make the numbers work, overpaying your mortgage certainly seems like a no-brainer. But like with every major decision in life, we have something called an opportunity cost, which in economics is defined as the loss of other alternatives when one alternative is chosen. So in order to get, I guess, a full and conclusive picture here, we need to compare and contrast the other alternatives that we have for that £200 a month that we can actually afford in overpayments. Could we look to invest it, save it, or perhaps even use it to build a business? Well, I think quantifying building a business with that 200 pounds per month is probably a little bit subjective, so perhaps that's another topic for another video. But what we can do is make some more accurate assumptions, I guess you could say, on actually using that 200 pounds per month to either save or invest it instead. So let's start by talking about saving it. Now, as of right now, interest rates on savings aren't amazing. However, they should slowly go up over time thanks to the central bank interest rates going up too. The savings account, which I personally have right now, is with Chase Bank. They pay 2.1% in interest on the savings that I have and they pay the interest on a monthly basis. So with £200 a month in savings over 25 years, achieving an interest rate of 2.1%, you will have actually made in just interest alone £17,893. But what does that exactly mean in comparison to overpaying our mortgage examples? Well, in option A, where mortgage rates are actually low, you'd actually be far better off saving the money instead as opposed to overpaying your mortgage. The reason being you would actually benefit more from the interest from your savings account over and above that of the interest that you would have actually saved from overpaying your mortgage instead. But in option B, where mortgage rates were 6%, you'd actually be far better off overpaying your mortgage because you'd save £54,000 in interest payments versus the roughly £18,000 in interest that you'd gain from having it in a savings account. However, at this point, there's probably a couple of caveats that we probably want to think about. The first thing being mortgage rates and savings rates, of course, aren't going to be fixed over a 25 year period, or at least it's highly unlikely anyway. And therefore, based on this assumption that all things aren't going to be fixed for a full 25 year period, these examples aren't exactly 100% accurate. So because of that, we do need to build in somewhat of a little bit more financial flexibility in some of the key financial decisions that we're going to make. The second consideration to think about here is that actually once you've overpaid your mortgage, 
there's actually nothing that you can do with that money because it's completely illiquid. You can't exactly go and take a brick from your house and take it down to the supermarket to buy your weekly shop. The only way that you can actually claw back some of that money from the property, also known as the equity, is to actually look to refinance it, which kind of puts you back at square one anyway. Whereas if you went down the savings route instead, you'd have 78 grand sat in a bank account somewhere that you could actually use to pay for stuff. Perhaps even use it to retire early, pay for a few extra holidays per year, or even just give you a little bit more financial security as you become older. And I guess this is where differing values and priorities probably come into play. For some people, they'd rather have the cash and financial flexibility of having the money in a savings account. Acting as either a safety net or an emergency fund or even just being a little bit of extra money that you can spend whenever and wherever you want. Whereas others perhaps value the security of having no debt on their property. Now whilst I'm obviously nowhere near paying back my own personal mortgage, I think there's still be, or at least I could probably imagine, there would be a huge psychological benefit to actually having overpaid a mortgage, knowing that if shit hits the fan, you've not exactly got a whopping big mortgage payment anymore, that you need to think about. And that for some people is certainly invaluable and you can't put a number on that psychological benefit that you would have achieved. But what about if you've got the appetite to invest? Because overpaying your mortgage or saving the money in a savings account instead are perhaps what I'd refer to as the perhaps lower risk appetite as well as more conservative approach to financial management. However, if you do have that slightly higher appetite for risk, what would happen to that £200 a month if it was invested instead? Well, I guess the first consideration to make is, well, what are you exactly investing into? Could it be stocks, bonds, commodities, Bitcoin, or a well-diversified portfolio with a mixture of them all? Well, whilst there are a million and one different investment combinations that I'm sure you could probably look towards, in today's video, we're going to keep things very, very simple. And we're simply just going to look at a standard 60-40 stock bond split Vanguard Life Strategy Fund. It holds 60% in equities in things like the Vanguard FTSE Developed World X UK Equity Index, the Vanguard US Equity Index Fund, and the Vanguard FTSE UK All Share Index 2. And the other 40% is based in bonds like the Vanguard Global Bond Index Fund, the Vanguard UK Government Bond, and the Vanguard UK Investment Grade Bond 2. And over the past 10 years, the specific fund has provided an average rate of return of 8.91% per year. So using that as our base case of investment returns, plugging it into a compound calculator, if we invest that £200 per month still for 25 years, the total interest earned would be £162,532. But not only that, but you'll also have an investment portfolio balance of just shy of a quarter of a million quid. So naturally, you're probably thinking at this point, well, I'd be far better off actually putting that £200 a month into a standard stock investment portfolio rather than overpaying my mortgage instead. But there is another consideration to think about. And that's simply that past returns aren't necessarily indicative of future performance because we're operating in a very different macroeconomic environment now than we have done over the course of the past 10 years. And that's because we've got high levels of inflation, interest rates are on the rise, and we've also got a slow global economic growth outlook. And that unfortunately is a bit of an environment and a concoction for potentially far lower equity market returns. So whilst this 60-40 stock bond split investment portfolio allocation has actually provided returns of just shy of 9% in the past 10 years, it doesn't necessarily go to say that we'll still achieve those 9% returns on average every single year for 10 years into the future too. Or should I say 25 years for the full duration of the mortgage. In actual fact, JP Morgan have recently published their 10 to 15 year outlook on global equity markets. And it certainly makes for a little bit of an interesting read. Their actual forecasts range from anywhere between 7.3% to 8.4%, depending on the geographical location that you're actually investing in, which of course is slightly lower than perhaps the investment returns that we've seen in the past. But equally, whilst average market returns are a good overall proxy for performance, we all know that market returns aren't consistent year on year. Here's a chart of the past 90 years of US stock market performance. What it clearly shows is that in some years the market is up, but on other years the market is down. And therefore your investment returns on £200 per month is absolutely not guaranteed. However, you could argue if you are on perhaps a longer term fixed rate mortgage, it's more of a, I guess you could say, a guaranteed rate of return 
because the rate of interest on the debt is going to be fixed for perhaps a five year period. And therefore, the balance reduction is consistent and it's not fluctuating throughout the duration of the term. So it certainly gives you an element of certainty of almost like a fixed rate return when you're overpaying your mortgage versus, I guess, the uncertainty of investing into the stock market where the investment returns are somewhat unknown. So the overriding question is, what exactly do you do? Well, the numbers certainly suggest a diversified investment portfolio is certainly the way to go. And based on the example I've provided in today's video, you'd have £162,000 in earned interest versus the £54,000 in saved interest on a 6% mortgage rate, or even the £18,000 in interest that you would have accumulated from putting it in a savings account. But I think the truth of the matter is here is that there's probably not a one-size-fits-all approach. I think it all very much depends on three things. Your own personal risk appetite, your own personal financial situation, and fundamentally just what brings you peace of mind. But I think in a more ideal world, the best approach is to probably be a little bit more dynamic with your financial decisions and your overall financial management. And it's where I'd probably propose something like the following. Firstly, always save up an emergency fund, which should be about three to six months worth of your monthly expenses. Secondly, then you should look to invest about 10% of your income. And then thirdly, if you're able to achieve step one and step two, then whatever spare surplus disposable cash that you have at the end of the month Perhaps you could then use that money to look to overpay your mortgage. I guess from that point of view, you kind of tick all of the boxes from a personal finance principles point of view. You get the security from having an emergency fund. You benefit from growing your wealth through investing, whilst also actively paying down your pledge till death. So I hope that answers the old age question of whether you should actually overpay your mortgage or invest the money instead. Now, before you go, if you are interested in the investments that I hold within my own personal trade into on two investment portfolio, then be sure to click on this video next where I actually invest £1,500 into the investment portfolio. So with that being said, see you over in the next one.